Hello and welcome to the assembling video of Jumex Lever Cans. I am Himanshu Fogler. Jumex started its operations in the year 1974, first catering to the jute industry and later diversifying to the textile industry. Being an indispensable part of the prestigious Fogler Group, Jumac has spread its wings in 18 countries spread across five continents with the state-of-the-art facilities and believing in the philosophy of every single product being a premium product, Jumac is growing and scaling new heights. I would now like to shift the focus towards my assembling team consisting of Mr. Arun Nayak and Mr. Prashant De to take over the assembling video. Hello guys, a Jumac Sliver can comes unassembled into six primary parts namely HDPE sheet bundles along with bottom binder springs bottom ring bottom plate top ring and top band top and bottom cover caster wheels we start the unpacking step by step there will be 8 to 10 sets of spares, 15 to 20 pieces of springs, 60 to 80 pieces of caster wheels, 15 to 20 pieces of top and bottom covers, and 5 to 20 pieces of body sheet in each bundle. To assemble the can, we require certain auxiliary items, such as nuts, bolts and rivets, along with a customized squeezing machine and a toolbox. We will now begin the assembling process. However, please make sure you have kept the sheets in cylindrical or round shape for about 3 to 4 hours. This ensures the cans retain their ideal cylindrical shape. Next in line are the top ring, top band, bottom plate and bottom ring. They come fitted together in one set. We fit the top ring and the top band together on top of the can. We need to adjust them meticulously. Now we engage in squeezing or pressing of the top band with the body sheet and top ring. This is done by the squeezing machine. The rollers of this machine needs to be pressed against the top band, body sheet and top ring. That makes a curve on top of the band. We roll the can horizontally on the machine with the roller that's attached to the machine binding the top band with the body sheet. This step is vital as it enables the can to retain its basic structure. The consistency of the curve is determined by the accuracy of this process. Notice that a stamped and pressurized ring is formed here on the inside where squeezing is done. This confirms that the process is done correctly. At the end of the step, both the top ring and the top band will get stuck to the body sheet and remain fixed just like this. We now install the bottom binder by pressing the body sheet and inserting the binder in that gap. Upon inserting, we leave the can as it is for the binder to take the shape of the main body sheet. A slight adjustment in the squeezing machine is needed wherein the rollers are reversed and refitted. The bottom ring is then rolled on the machine to reshape the same. This is done to remove the gap which may arise when the cans are fitted between the bottom ring and sheet. This stage is important as it entirely reduces the gap that remains after the fitting of the bottom ring with the can body. This also enables a compact and accurate assembling of the can with zero gaps. Next we fit the caster wheels on the bottom plate in the holes marked for the same with the help of nuts and bolts that come along with the main parts.
Now both the bottom ring and the bottom plate with caster wheels are fitted together at the bottom of the body sheet. Proper hammering is required on all sides of the ring for precise fitting of the plate and ring with the body sheet. This stage plays an important role in the entire assembling process. Once this is done, we drill holes with a drilling machine on the bottom ring for riveting. We cover the entire circumference of the can with equidistant 16 to 20 drills, depending on the size of the can. At one go, the four parts, bottom ring, bottom plate, body sheet and bottom binder need to be drilled to maintain the stability of the can. We can drill horizontally or vertically depending on the convenience of the fitter. Now we insert the pop rivets with a pop gun inside the holes which are made by the drilling machine. This step facilitates the fitting of the bottom portion of the can with the bottom ring and body sheet. The last phase comprises the springs, top and bottom cover. We insert the spring wire inside the grooves, three each, on both top and bottom covers. We have to first insert it in the three grooves on the bottom cover. The springs rest on the top cover in the free space. Can you see a set of three stay wires with rings here attached to the bottom cover? We will clip these wires with the height adjusting clip on the top cover that is fitted inside the groove with the help of a clip. This will help the spring to stand erect. This complete spring set is next inserted in the can, which is finally ready to use. However, if the springs are of pantograph type, we need to first unbundle the same and prepare for the top cover fitting. Notice that there are three holes on the top cover. These holes need to be matched with the holes on the top of the pantograph frame and screwed with the nuts and bolts that are provided especially for this purpose. Please take special care to match the top cover holes with the ones on the pantograph frame. Otherwise, the top cover won't fit in properly. Finally, the fitted pantograph set is inserted in the can and the can is ready to run on the machine. So friends, the assembling of a Dumax Sliver can is complete. I hope this tutorial will help you assemble a can easily and effectively.